Hi readers, we are working today on lesson 12. Lesson 12 is our last story about Henry and Tim. So next reading class, we'll be taking a little quiz on our Henry and Tim stories. Remember, it's not going to quite be test 10 from the book, so don't work on that. But it's going to be a similar kind of idea, but it's going to be on Google Forms for you to work on clicking answers and then going to the bottom of that test and making sure you click on submit at the bottom of the test. All right. But for today, lesson 12. Touching column one. Those first words in column one are polar bear. What words? Good. Words for two are ice flow. What word? Good. An ice flow is a flat sheet of ice that floats in the ocean. It's like a flat iceberg. Word three is umu. What word? Great. Word four is ulak. What word? Well done. Scholars, Umu and Ulak are actually characters in the next stories, but we're not going to be reading those next stories. So if you're interested in reading about Umu and Ulak and their story with the polar bear on an ice floe, you could on your own free read that. It's the stories for lessons 13 to 22. Lessons 13 to 22. We're going to be skipping those, so if you want to read it on your own, you can. Word five is shoulder. What word? Good. Let's go down this list the quick way. Here we go. Polar bear, ice flow, umu, ulak, shoulder. Moving to column two. Scholars, you'll notice in column two, Parts of the words are underlined because there's more than one syllable. So we're going to break it down. All right. Word one, the underlined part is pebble. The whole word is pebbled. What word? Good. So things that are pebbled are covered with small stones or pebbles. Right? A road that is covered with many small stones is a pebbled road. Word two. The underlined part is splat. The whole word is splatter. What word? Yes. When wet things hit something, they splatter and spread out. Right? When you throw a wet snowball and it hits something, it splatters. Word three. The underlined part is Alaska. The whole word is Alaskan. So someone that's from Alaska is Alaskan. What word? Great. Word four, the underlined part is scatter. The whole word is scattered. What word? Excellent. Let's do column two the quick way. We're back up here at the top. Word one is pebbled, splatter, Alaskan, scattered. Column three, what are words one? Killer whale. Word two, the word is Eskimo. Word three, the word is spear. Word four, the word is January. These words also all tie into the story about Umu and Ulak. Let's go through column three the quick way. Ready? Pointing, killer whale, Eskimo, spear, January. Column four. Word one is walrus. What word? Good. Word two is kayak. What word? Good. Word three is sun. What word? Excellent. Word four is restless. What word? Great. Let's do column four the quick way. I'm at the top. 
Here we go. Walrus, kayak, sun, restless. Scholars, all of these words really tie in to our next story, those next stories about Umu and Ulak. So again, if you're interested in reading those, you can. It's lessons 13 to 22. We will not be doing those in class, so you're welcome to read them on your own if you're interested. So today, scholars, we are going to be reading our last story about Henry and Tim. But before we do that, we have an information passage that gives us a few facts about Eskimos. Right? Maybe creating a little interest in you reading about Umu and Ulak on your own. Facts about Eskimos. In the next lesson, you will read about Eskimos. The winters are very cold where Eskimos live. Eskimos live near the North Pole in Canada and Alaska. Alaska is a state of the United States, but it is far north of the main part of the United States. Touch Alaska on the map. Everyone, let's take a moment to do that. Does Alaska touch the other states of the United States? No, it doesn't. In which direction do you have to go from the main part of the United States to get to Alaska? Which two directions would you have to go? Did you say north and west? Excellent. Everyone touch the letter C on the map. Is that letter C in Alaska? No. Do you remember the name of the country that that letter is in? Right, Canada. Remember, Eskimos live in this part of Canada, the northern part of Canada and Alaska. Picture two shows an Eskimo with some of the things that Eskimos use. The Eskimo is holding a fishing pole in one hand. The Eskimo is holding a fishing spear in the other. The Eskimo is wearing warm clothes that are made from animal skins. Near the Eskimo is a sled. Scholars, in which season do we use a sled? Right, winter. They can carry things on the sled. They can ride on the sled. A very useful tool in the winter. The dogs that pull the sleds are called sled dogs. The boat that Eskimos use in the summer is called a kayak. Maybe you've gone kayaking before. Make sure you can read these words. Eskimo, kayak, Alaska, spear. Now, scholars, I'd like you to press pause for a moment and read that information passage aloud before we continue with our last story about Henry and Tim. All right, part C, our last story today about Henry and Tim. Back to Canada. Tracking finger ready or bookmark, index card. Let's track together. There were hundreds of geese on Crooked Lake and in the fields around it. Henry and Tim circled the lake twice before Henry spotted their flock. Then he pointed his wing toward the south shore and said, There's our flock right there. The two geese flew very low over the flock and honked loudly. As they made a sharp turn and headed back, Henry could hear some of the geese in the flock saying things like, Who are those geese? And doesn't that one goose look a lot like Henry? 
Tim and Henry landed right in the middle of the flock. Oh, how the geese honked and flapped their wings. Tim's mom flapped her wings so hard, she sent little feathers flying all over the place. His dad rushed over and gave Tim a big old goose kiss. Oh, my son, he said. I didn't think we'd ever see you again. Tim had tears in his eyes. As Tim ran off with his mom and dad, Henry's friends formed a big circle around him and honked so loudly that you could hear them for miles. A few minutes later, some of his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren came from their flocks to give Henry big old goose kisses. So scholars, I'm going to hold that spot for just a moment. Who did we just read that Tim went off with? after he and Henry landed. Right, his parents. Were his parents surprised to see him? If you said yes, you are correct. And who were the first geese to welcome Henry? Right, his friends. Let's continue. Are you still tracking? One of Henry's grandchildren said, We didn't think we, you were coming, but we knew we would see you next summer when we went north again. Yes, a great-grandchild said, but now you'll be able to fly back to Canada with us next spring. Henry started to say, Oh, I don't know. But then he smiled and said, Sure. We'll all go back to Canada in the spring. So scholars, holding that spot for a moment, Henry started to say, I don't know. Why did he say that? Did your answer just relate to him not thinking he'd be able to make the trip again? Because remember, he's getting pretty old and tired. So I think he was starting to think, oh, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it again. But instead, he stopped himself and said, hmm, yeah, sure, we'll all go back. And that's what happened. Henry spent the winter in the warm Florida sun, napping, eating, swimming, and visiting with his friends and family. About two times every week, he would go flying with some of the geese who were less than a year old. He would always make sure that Tim went with them. Henry would give the young geese practice at flying in a V. Henry would honk out orders as the V would swoop over Crooked Lake, very low and very fast. Once in a while, Henry would have a sore wing after flying with the young geese, but his wing wasn't too bad. Henry wasn't really worried about his wing because the trip back north was a lot easier than the trip down to Florida. The trip north started in January. But the geese wouldn't reach Big Trout Lake in Canada until the middle of April. So think of that, scholars. They start out on their trip in January, and they reach Big Trout Lake in Canada in April. So, right, that's three to four months that they're traveling. So they're taking much more time on their way back. At the beginning of January... Tim, Henry, and all the geese began feeling restless. Still tracking, scholars? They wanted to fly north. Two days later, the first flocks took off. Over the next few days, Henry watched hundreds and hundreds of flocks take off. Finally, Henry's flock was ready. It flew into the sky, 
and joined other flocks that were leaving Crooked Lake, Reedy Lake, and the other nearby lakes. The geese flew in four great V's. The sky was filled with geese. So, scholars, in which direction did we just read that they want to go? Right north. Remember, geese fly north in the spring. They fly south in the fall. Right? Henry's flock followed the warm weather as it moved north. The flock would stay at a landing place long enough to make sure that the next landing place would not be frozen. Finally, in the middle of April, the flock arrived at Big Trout Lake. There was honking and flapping as the geese met other flocks that stayed at Big Trout Lake during the summer. Two days after the flock landed at Big Trout Lake, Tim and Henry said goodbye. It was time for Tim and the other geese that were almost a year old to form their own flock and fly off to Sandy Lake. The young geese would spend the summer at that lake. So scholars, Tim is joining right, a new flock. He's forming a new flock. Right? And all these geese are about a year old in this new flock. So that's why Henry's children and grandchildren weren't in his flock. Those young geese each year form their own flocks. Before Tim left, he give, gave Henry a big old goose kiss and said, Thank you for everything you've done. And I hope that I'll see you next winter at Crooked Lake. Henry said, I'll be there. Scholars, do you think Henry is going to miss Tim? I sure do. Do you think Tim is going to miss Henry? Yes, I do too. Right? I think they formed a really good friendship right, in their quest to get to Florida. All right, I want you to pause for a moment and read today's story aloud to someone. Right? A family member, a pet, a favorite stuffy. Right? And then... We'll talk about your assignment. All right, I hope your reading of the last story about Henry and Tim went well. This is the look at your work for today. So your last assignment in this packet. That feels pretty good, doesn't it? So scholars, it says, what can characters teach us, right? So characters in books can teach us things, right? We can learn from those characters. So it says, choose either Tim or Old Henry. So you get to choose, do you want to use, want to use Tim or do you want to use Old Henry? And I want you to, once you pick Tim or Old Henry, think about some of his positive personality traits. So positive, right? They're the good, right? Good positive traits. Right? So positive are good things about someone. And personality, remember, is their character, their inside. So their inside, their character. So not what you can see looking at Tim or old Henry, right? But how they act, how they behave. Right, their insides. Right, we call that their character. Right? Their personality is like their character, their inner traits. Right? Then think about when the character acts this way and why. So whatever you thought of here for positive, like good traits inside their body, then think, what can this character teach me about living to be a more virtuous person? So if you're stuck, there's some ideas, right, of how you could kind of do some starters to help you out. 
But then here's what blank, so Tim or old Henry, can teach me about living, about being a more virtuous person. So you want to here write three sentences, right? Describing what you can learn from old Henry or Tim, right? based on their good personality traits. I'm really looking forward to reading your three sentences, right? Or more if you would like, but I'm really looking forward to reading what you have to say about what Tim or Henry could teach you, what you could learn from them. Good luck, scholars. And I hope you enjoyed the Henry and Tim stories as much as I did.